denies that Jesus was crucified. And I believe in the brother has given me a deadly poison and he wants me to drink it. I Hello guys, yeah, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are feeling good, my name is Bukumi Bikki Kran. So, this pastor challenged to drink poison to prove the Bible. What happened next will shock you. So, let's watch, guys. I want yes, to ask a question to Mr. Stanley. That is according to the uh, title, is the Bible true word of God? And uh, he accepted that he, uh, he, he believed that the Bible is the true word of God and he believed in Jesus. So I want to ask if you have the complete faith in Jesus Christ. And if yes, then according to, I have one uh, question here, according to Mark in the Bible, chapter 16, and verse 18, you have in your lecture said that uh, they will, uh, about the sickness and uh, things that uh, you can uh, recover the sickness of the people. And in the same verse, it stands that if, you, if they drink any deadly things, it will not hurt them. Hmm. That is the same verse. And I have here a po poison. Hmm. And you please... Have you please testified for the audience that you have the true faith in Jesus? What? Thank you, sir, for your question. My brother has given me a deadly poison and he wants me to drink it. Oh, no. He wants me to make a show and tell you that it is true what is written in Mark 16 that if we drink something that is poisoned we will not die. No. Now, very it's strange. Not car. You see, I believe in God. I have experienced the Holy Spirit and in our family we have experienced the Holy Spirit as a reality. And the Holy Spirit tells us what is going to happen. And my wife told me Thursday night, Stanley, be careful, someone will try to poison you. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I was invited through, uh, when I was invited through Suhil hmm. Aziz Khan, that uh, Mr. Ahmed Didat, Tuesday evening, want to give me dinner. My wife said, Stanley, be careful. <laughs> Do you know why? Because we know about many, Mus many Muslims who became Christians and were killed. Oh. Now, am I going to drink this and you will see me fall down and die? Now, listen to this. When you know the Bible, the first thing I will answer before, before really telling you what I'm going to do. Wait. I, I'm shaking a little bit. Excuse me. But this listen now. Do this. You see, you asked me if I believe in Jesus. And I want to tell you. I believe in Jesus as it is written in the Gospels. I don't believe in Jesus as it is written in the Quran. Because the Quran denies that Jesus is the Son of God. The Quran denies that Jesus was crucified. The Quran does not accept that Jesus was resurrected. The Quran I'm denies sure. that Jesus is Messiah. I'm and I believe in the, in the oh. way the Bible says that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and He's equal with God! Ah, equal with God? Jesus 
Sizin o ilk kolu itibar. But now listen my brother. Listen my brother. Do you know? One day Satan himself approached Jesus. And the devil met Jesus in the wilderness and said, Throw yourself up from a high wall and make a show and try to show the people that you are the son of God. When Jesus was standing in front of King Herod, even King Herod said to Jesus, now do some miracles for us so we can have a little fun. Mr. Didat, you have written a book and you have made fun of Jesus and you have said that the Bible is contradicting each other, itself because in, in, in the prophecies it says, yes, I'm coming to say, Yes. Ladies, I'm ladies asking and him. gentlemen, I'm the asking is him. If you want to kill me, I must have five minutes more. Ah. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that in front of Herod, Jesus did not open his mouth according Why? to the scripture. And Jesus did this? not make a show of the miracles. And when you gave me this question today, I recognize the devil in you, and I'm not going to obey the devil. I'm not going to make a show. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell all the others that Jesus, he wants to heal. He does not want to cause sickness. He will give life. He don't want to kill people by alcohol and drugs. It's the devil who wants to cause damage. And Jesus, he wants to give blessing. <laughs> now I have become a little too excited. I think I must sit down. If you with regards to the poison story, the young man had a just question. He was justified in asking a just question. It was a matter of faith. You have faith? Then I want proof. Mm. And Jesus Christ, if it was him, in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, the ending verses, verse 17, you read it. You read it that what you are supposed to do. But you know in this Bible here, that verse is not here. Pastor, that verse, 9 to, 9 to 20 verses of Mark are not here. I don't know if anybody here, you young man, can you read English? No, you can't. Mm. Pastor, would you like to help me? I said, Look, in this Bible here, produced by the Christians, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations of Christendom, they have thrown it out as a fabrication. Verses 9 to 20 are thrown out, they are not here, sir, in this Bible. But of course, as I told you last night, that now they have reintroduced it in this one. They look alike, but they took it out here and they put it back. You know why? This is because of certain individuals and church denominations, they, they, they terrified them. That verse, that verse, that verse, it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. If you believe in Jesus, these are the signs that will follow. In my name shall they cast out devils. And the pastor said, you got the devil. You are the devil. Telling the young question, the timid young man, you know, he was terrified to articulate his question. And now, with all the power at his command, with the mic system behind him, he said, you are a devil. I recognize the devil in you, and I'm not going to obey the devil. I'm not going to make a show. Oh. Oh. Why so serious? That poor man is shivering in his pants, you know, and now you have got the power, God had given it to you. You should cast out the devil, heal the man. Instead of terrifying him into death, Heal the man. You are supposed to, number one, cast out devils. And they shall speak new tongues. The professor does it beautifully in Urdu. I said, what about Zulu? What about Zulu? 
Then you speak Zulu, sir? Ninga zindi ngoguti, sino Abrahama ubaba wetu. Uti kumvusela go Abrahama, awandona gula macho. Talking about tongues, tongues means speaking different languages. For every one language, for every one language that the pastor can speak, I'll give him three foreign languages for every one he speaks. <laughs> and that is without the help of any Holy Ghost, no Holy Ghost. I'll do it on my own God-given computer. Right. They shall speak new tongues. They shall take up serpents, snakes. Where are you going to look for serpents in Scandinavia? And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. If you have belief, if you have faith. So that young man was trying to test his faith. Instead, he loses his temper. He's lost his faith with it. Faith also goes with it. Makashata, Lama Ashanda da Bosoya. Mandele Bosi Plandea, De Bosum Bolande de Becheta la Monte. Mosha Resi Kamama Bahoture Hesse and the Mahasset. a famous preacher whose faith centered on a passage in the Bible promising protection from snakes. A rattlesnake took his life. Matt Wolford, a renowned Pentecostal serpent handler, died after suffering a bite from one of the snakes that he used to show his devotion to God. Oh my God, the, the pastor actually went too far. Something led to that verse. But it's not trying to say that human beings should do that. So me, I, I mean, I believe that verse was actually you know, misinterpreted. That's what I would say. And the pastor went too far. He shouldn't have done all those things. You know, at first, I thought he was going to drink the poison. The way he actually poured it inside the cup, I was like, what is this man trying to do? Then all of a sudden, you know, he started saying, you would not do that. This, so why did you take the challenge in the first place. You should have just make it plain to the person that no, that is not what the Bible is trying to say. Because when you take poison, you will die. You will die because it's beyond the physical. There are a lot of you know, verses from the Bible that people misinterpret. Because if you don't read it from the beginning to listen to what it says, then you miss quote or you misinterpret a particular verse. And the pastor, there was no need for all those things he actually did. There was no need for him saying that the devil in you, but he would just say it straight and clear. I cannot take this. Yes, it is written in the Bible, but let's look at the Bible very well. Let's go you know, to the verse before that verse. Let's see what, what actually led to it. Yes, we'll speak in different tongues, but that particular part that say you touch you no know, serpents, anything you take, you know, will not kill you. No, it's just trying to tell you that spiritually that if you are with God, you serve God diligently. No harm will come to you. God will protect you from every plan of the evil, from every evil thing. But, wow, this is serious. But, well, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more. Like, share, and comment. I'll see you in the next one.